So now that we've gone ahead and we've done the GUI, the next option is to use sconfig, which is done on the Windows Server Core. So if we go ahead and we go into our Windows Server Core system, uh, we'll go ahead and log in on this guy. And by default, it starts us off with a command prompt and it also starts us off in a fairly small command prompt. I need I need more space than what this gives me right here. So just like we did with the other machine, I'm going to go ahead and change its resolution. I'm going to do it a little bit differently, however, because I don't have the same GUI. I can't right click on the background in order to change the resolution. So for this, I'm gonna go into PowerShell. And specifically, I'm going to run a PowerShell command called set display resolution with a specific width of 19, 1920 and a height, oops, height of 1080. And then it will try to resize my screen and says, do you like this? Yes or no. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And it says great get out of PowerShell there and now that I've gone ahead and I have resized my screen now I can come in here make my fonts a little bit easier to read on the large screen and now we can go ahead and enter into sconfig uh, in order to get into sconfig all you have to do in this command prompt is type in sconfig with your keyboard let me show that one more time. Sconfig and then hit enter on your keyboard. Sconfig opens up this server configuration UI for me. Uh, it's a little bit difficult for some people to understand because, well, you're using the keyboard instead of the mouse. Uh, in this case, the mouse is just for show. Uh, you're probably not going to touch it at this point. However, looking at my options here, I have, well, I can specify the domain name, the computer name, uh, I can add local admins, remote management, and so on. Going back to the process that we just did on the other machine, I'm going to start off by changing the date and time, or at least reviewing the date and time. Once I have the date and time, I'm then going to choose the network settings, and then once the network settings are set, I will join or change the computer name and join it to the domain. So in order to change the date and time, I, I see I have next to this the number nine. So in order to change the date and time, what I do is I simply type in the number nine and hit enter. And then it pops up the nice little date time window. That's awful kind of it. So if I wanna change the time zone, what I could do is I can go ahead and just click change time zone. And then it tells me, hey, here's all of your time zones that are possible. Choose the one you prefer. Again, I'm in the Pacific time zone, so I don't need to change that. Uh, if I need to change the specific time frame, I can do that there. And then also I can go and change the internet time to have it time sync to another time source or not use the time source at all. Great, so we'll assume that I went ahead and changed the time, even though I didn't have to in this case. The next set, next setting I wanna change is the network. So I can see here network settings. Next to it, the number is eight. So down here when it asks me enter number to select an option, I want to go ahead and type in the number eight, oops, eight, and hit enter. It then looks at my network ad adapters and it says, okay, I see one network adapter right here. And then it asks me to select the net network adapter index number. Well, if I look, I have index number here and this specific adapter number is one. So then I wanna type in the number one and hit enter. Here I have four options. I can set the network adapter address. I could set the DNS servers. I can clear the DNS servers or I can go back to the main menu. So what I want to do is I want to set options number one and two. We'll go ahead and start with one and enter. 
Do I want a DHCP address or a static IP? I want a static IP in this case. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in S and hit enter, S for static. Type in my IP address, 192.168.10.51. Seems like a good IP address for this case. And enter. Uh, it automatically sees that that's a class C address, so it tries to put a class C mask on it. That's perfect. Default gateway, 182.168.10.1. And then takes me back to the network adapter settings. And we can see, yes, my network adapter now has an address, now has a subnet mask, and now has a default gateway. So now I need to set the network, uh, the DNS servers. So option number two says enter the preferred DNS server. If you don't want to set one, just hit enter. I want to set the preferred DNS server 192.168.10.10. Uh, oh, I did a typo. 268 is not a valid number. Um, so preferred DNS server could not be set. Let me try that again. 192.168.10.10. There we go. Uh, I only have one DNS server in this case, so I'm going to leave the second one blank. I'm just going to hit enter. And I can now see that I have my DNS server set up. So now I'm going to choose option number four to go back to the main menu to see what else there is to configure. So we've set the date and time. We've set the network settings. Now I want to change the domain name and the computer name. I could choose option number two to set the computer name and then choose option number one to set the domain name. However, if I change the computer name, a machine has to reboot. And so I have to wait for the reboot before I can then add it into the work group or into the domain. If I choose option number one, however, it will actually prompt me if I want to change the name so I could do it all in one shot. So I'm going to change the domain name here. Uh, which do I want to do? Do I want to click D for domain or W for workgroup? Well, I want to join a domain, so I'm going to type in D. Type in the domain I want. Well, it's going to be testlab.local is the name of my domain. Asks me for a username, uh, uh, an administrator in the test lab domain who can join my sh machine to the domain. So that is testlab backslash administrator. Enter prompts me very, very smallly and says, uh, go ahead and type in a password that is associated with this specific domain user. So I'll go ahead and type in that user's password. And then it asks, do you want to change the computer name? Yes. Yes, I absolutely want to change the computer name. That's why I went this way, so that I could do everything in one shot. So yes, I want to change the computer name before restarting. Uh, what name do I want to give it? Let's just call it uh, server core 01. Again, it asks me for the username and password. So test lab administrator and the password associated with it. It then says, great, you must now restart the computer to apply all of these changes. And because I did that in this method, I've reset the computer name as well as joined it to the domain. So yes, I want to restart the computer. It then brings me back to the control delete to unlock. Uh, and it specifically says enter credentials for the administrator or hit escape to switch users. Well, I want to switch users, so I'm going to hit escape. Uh, escape again to further switch users. And in this case, I want to select other user. Uh, again, this uh, if you're not familiar with this user interface, I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard, the up and down arrow keys. And I'm selecting other user and then select enter. 
asks me for the credentials for that other user. The username is going to be test user one and his super secret password and then enter. And it goes ahead and logs me into that computer using the test user one profile.